What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, episode number 17. We start today's episode off once again with this email on our desk. Are we going to join Everton? Are we going to stay at Norwich? We're sort of just sitting there installing the offer and thinking, I don't know. I mean, you know, as you can see here, we're in 7th. Everton have now improved to 10th there. I think it's 8 points behind us now, so... I don't know. I mean, it's it's a really good offer, you know. Everton's a very very decent club, and uh, I just I just don't know. I mean, I, I kind of want to stay at Norwich because it is a project, but moving to Everton, you know, so early could be a bit of a. It could it could be you know one of two things. It could be good. It could be bad. But um, we get a news article saying it's decision time for us, and uh, we need to you know, make the choice now or never really. The Norwich fans want us to stay at the club, Everton want us to come there, and I'm just like, I don't know what to do, seriously. But uh, anyway, um, Czech Republic come to us, and uh, it was funny, I never got this email until it was too late, but uh, Czech Republic uh, rescind the offer um, to manage their nation. I didn't even get that email until it was too late, but uh, we're not going to manage Czech Republic, but um, I don't really care, I wasn't really interested anyway. And then Robert Snodgrass comes to us and says, may we discuss wages? And I was like, no, I'm not interested, seriously. You've got a good enough contract but um anyway i was very pleased about this uh the belgian fa come to us and say would you like to manage our nation and that is the nation we've been after that's the nation i was talking about at the start of the series when we first got our, our managerial offers to manage austria and australia i was like that's the nation i want i want someone like belgium you know young uh you know a, a nation with young talent and and some very decent talent and very good players and i was like that's the nation we want we're going to stall it for now but what i'm going to do is uh if we don't get any better offers by the time that managerial role is about to run out we're going to take Belgium so unless we get another nation like Spain or England we're going to take Belgium but um anyway uh funnily enough uh the Everton role also ran out so um we're not going to be leaving to Everton it was really weird it was it was really really weird it, it just it just went it just went all of a sudden like it was in my emails and uh all of a sudden it just disappeared you know there was no contract there anymore I mean I, I know it's been like a week uh, since the uh, the original offer came in, but there was no follow up email. You know when uh, an offer is about to be rescinded to manage internationally, um, the international FA will say, you know, make a decision now or never. That never happened. It was just nothing, literally nothing. I was waiting. I was waiting. I was thinking, I don't know. I'll stall it for the time being, and then make a decision at the last minute. But there was no last minute. They just rescinded the offer straight away. So I don't know. Bill Kenwright must have got fed up with me, really, and found someone else. So um, it was just really weird. But uh, we're not going to be leaving to Everton. Uh, they just decided to uh, say we took too long. And and to be honest, that's fine. I I didn't want to leave. I'll, I'll be honest. I wasn't going to take the job anyway. I was going to decline it no matter what. But um, it's just odd that happened but um i'm not bothered like i say i wasn't going to take it and um we're going to stay at norwich because it is a project i mean leaving like six months after uh, after taking the, the norwich job like straight away to start the series i mean and that's the thing to start the series at a club and then leave six months after that just i don't know it didn't seem very appealing for me and uh i, I just I, I, what i thought was that you guys would think it's kind of pointless this whole six month period Otherwise, we may as well have just started Everton, you know. So that's why we're not going to Everton. Uh, I apologise for having any Toffees fans out there that want me to go. I apologise if any of you thought it would be better for me to go to Everton. But I just thought, to be honest, if I was watching this series and uh, the uploader leaves after just like six, seven months... Uh, of starting the series, it'll be like, what was the point in even starting at that club anyway? Do you know what I mean? So uh, we're not going to go to Norwich. Maybe uh, we're not going to go to Everton. Sorry, maybe I made the wrong decision. I don't know, but um, I think it'll be better for everyone if we stay at Norwich and uh, don't go to Everton. And that's exactly why I decided to decline that uh, deal to go to Goodison Park. But uh, anyway, uh, we have to put that behind us straight away as we took on Newcastle United here. And uh, seven minutes in, Johan Elmanda, gotta love that guy, uh, makes it one 0 to Norwich. And uh, just a few minutes after that, Newcastle kick off. And uh, Czech Teote plays the ball back to uh, Williamson here. Plays the ball forward. It's a terrible, lazy ball. Townsend wins it. Gives it to Elmanda. Plays a great chip ball through to, uh, through to Ricky Van Volswinkel. He goes through. Bad first touch, but he still manages to dink the ball over Tim Krull and put the ball past his uh, Dutch colleague. So uh, it's 2-0 to Norwich uh, 10 minutes in. A fantastic start here at Carrow Road. And the fans must have been absolutely delighted that we decided not to go to Everton. So 2-0 here. And a few minutes after that, Johan Elmanda comes through. Plays it out wide to Nathan Redmond 
Redmond. Redmond rolls the ball through to Ricky Van Wolfswinkel. Can he get another goal? Unfortunately, his chip shot this time goes wide of the post. So still 2-0. In the 20th minute, Andros Townsend skips past his man. Plays the ball wide to Leroy Fur. Fur down the right-hand side. Takes on Taylor. I'm not sure if it's Stephen or Ryan. But he takes on Taylor regardless. Crosses the ball into the far post. There's Van Wolfswinkel headed up in the air. There's Nathan Redmond on the volley, but it's a poor attempt. And the ball goes sailing over the bar. So still 2-0. Well, it's half an hour played. Uh, Leroy Fur picks the ball up here and finds Ricky Van Wolfswinkel. He plays the ball out wide to Andros Townsend. First time ball back into Ricky Van Wolfswinkel. Crosses it in. There's Leroy Fur. Absolutely love Leroy Fur. And Leroy Fur gets his seventh goal of the campaign. So Norwich 3, Newcastle 0. But unfortunately, Newcastle did manage to get a goal back here. That was really quick. Apologies for that. Uh, one of their new signings, Doombia, smashes the ball past Jack Button to make it 3 1. And in the 69th minute, they got another goal here when unfortunately we couldn't get the ball clear. And Jonas Gutierrez puts the ball past Butland. So Norwich 3, Newcastle 2. Disappointed to let two goals slip there after we had a three goal lead. But uh, in the 72nd minute, Luke Shaw picks the ball up here, uh, cuts through. Nice uh, step over to get around his man, takes aim from range but it's a simple catch for Tim McCrawl and in the 83rd minute uh, Teddy picks the ball up here plays it out wide to Russell Martin our right back Martin plays it back in field to Leroy Fur. Fur finds Teddy Teddy comes through skips past his man nice piece of dribbling by Teddy nice fake shot past to Bushi, but his shot is well saved and Newcastle managed to get the ball clear so 3-2 to final score uh, a five goal game and again I was you know I was pleased that we scored three goals but to let in two goals from a side that weren't really playing well that's that's kind of sloppy and um, it's take the positives we got the three points but you know we, we had a free goal lead in 32 minutes and you know we weren't able to build on that and we weren't able to keep uh, two goals out and that's kind of disappointing so we have to take that and uh, we get a win that's the most important thing but there was still a lot of negatives to take from that as well but uh, anyway uh, we had the FA Cup uh, fifth round I do believe or round of 16 clash here uh, against Manchester City uh, of course a bit of a dress rehearsal for the Capital One Cup final here so I was like I don't really care if we lose this game or win this game so as per usual it is a big game against Man City but uh, as per usual we rest the entire side because I'm I'm just not that interested in the FA Cup, you know, I mean, if we weren't in the Capital One Cup final, I'd show more care to this, but, you know, we're in the Capital One Cup final already, um, and that's our main priority now, so we may as well just rest all the players, there's no point in getting these players injured, you know, uh, for, for, for the biggest game of the season. Um, which is in just a couple of weeks. We may as well just rest the entire side and who cares if we get absolutely battered, you know. It's it's like we'll tire out the Man City players and uh, nothing will happen to us other than a, an early exit. And I'm like, I don't really care anyway because we're already in the final of a cup competition regardless. So... <coughs> Taking on City here at the Etihad, uh, like I said, there was very, very little care in this game. The only player that survived was uh, Jack Butland in goal, so I wasn't really that bothered. And um, like I said, I just, I just didn't really care. I know I should have put more care into this because it is a cup competition, and uh, the board would probably want us to do well in it. But um, for me. Fitness is the most important thing. I don't want to have fitness problems. I don't want to get any first team players injured. And, um, you know, I might as well just rest the entire side and try try and tire out and possibly injure the Man City players ahead of the Capital One Cup final. But, um, yeah, I also uh, skipped past the uh, pre match uh, lineup information there. So apologies for that. But, um, anyway, uh, in the second minute, unfortunately for us, straight away, I knew it was going to be a long afternoon here at the Etihad because City came through and uh, Sammy and Nasri just rifled the ball past Jack Butler and he just holds his arms up and says, what kind of defending was that? That was terrible. I was all over the place. And it was going to be a long afternoon here for the uh, the Norwich fans who made the trip here uh, to the Etihad Stadium. But uh, straight from kickoff, we uh, came through. Billy Sharp finds uh, Gary Hooper. Johnny Housen crosses the ball through to Gary Hooper, who cuts through the middle and rifles the ball on a half volley past Joe Hart. So straight after conceding, Gary Hooper, the former Celtic striker, makes it City 1, Norwich 1. I was so surprised that we hit back straight away after conceding. I, I thought it was going to be a very long afternoon afternoon but maybe not Gary Hooper getting a goal to level the score up but once again straight from kickoff this time it's Man City who try and uh, get a goal straight after the opposition score uh, Lescott finds Benzema here who finds Negredo the Spanish striker releases Nasri and Nasri comes down the left hand side here uh, the Frenchman collects the ball holds off Garrido finds Javi Garcia he puts the ball into the middle Sean Morrison with a terrible terrible
Aguero will pass out. It's cleared. It comes to James Milner. Milner finds Pablo Zabaleta who rolls the ball in. There's Karim Benzema who rides the challenge and Benzema smashes the ball into the bottom corner. So uh, Nasri and Benzema, the two Frenchmen uh, with the goals here. Eight minutes in, Man City 2, Norwich 1. So yeah, it was going to be a long afternoon after all. But um, even so, you know, we, we weren't just going to give up just like that. And uh, Olsen finds Hooper here. Hooper releases Olsen down the left-hand side. What a chance for Olsen to make it 2-2. But unfortunately, his shot goes straight at Joe Hart. And the score is still... 2-1 but um, like I say we were playing actually quite well despite the fact we conceded two early goals we were still attacking really well and Billy Sharp releases Pilkington here another good chance for us down the left hand side but again Joe Hart makes the save and it's still 2-1 in the 28th minute though Nasri comes through he finds Benzema his shot is well saved by Jack Button and the score remains at City 2 Norwich 1 but uh, City get a free kick here and it's uh, struck by Karim Benzema and unfortunately Jack Button can't keep the ball out so Benzema makes it 3-1 and the, uh, the French players for City were just completely dominating us but like I say despite the fact that City had the uh, the early goals we were still playing pretty well and Snodgrass's shot here required a very good save from Joe Hart it was a shame that Joe Hart was playing really well but yeah uh, just uh, but um, on the stroke of the hour mark uh, City came through and uh, this is a really sloppy goal Zabaleta's header some poor marking and uh, I think Jack Butler should have saved that but um, yeah City 4 Norwich 1 but again we were still attacking you know despite the fact we conceded 4 goals we were still attacking and trying to get some goals here and uh, you see Johnny Housen play the ball through to uh, Bennett down the right hand side he crosses the ball to the far post there's Olsen Olsen who was looking very promising down the left hand side gets a goal here and uh, reduces the deficit so City 4 Norwich 2 and uh, in the 79th minute Negredo rolls the ball through to Yaya Torre and unfortunately the Ivory Coast man smashes the ball past Jack Butlin so City 5 Norwich 2 and uh, unfortunately it was all about defending you know and, uh, City defended really well uh, Joe Hart played really well in goal uh, and unfortunately we just didn't defend well at all and we we just didn't take our chances. Like I said, Joe Hart makes some very good saves. Uh, Butlin wasn't having that great of a game. And uh, defensively, I was all over the place. So, in general, I mean, we had just as many chances as Man City in the entire game. It's just we didn't take them and City did. And the game finished 5-2. And there were positives to take. And the positives were we had just as many chances as Man City. As you'll see in the match stats in just a moment. We had just as many chances as Man City away at the Etihad with a backup side. So take the positives. We may be out of the FA Cup. It may look like a very bad scoreline. But the scoreline doesn't reflect the performance. And um, there's still some promising signs for the Capital One Cup final. And like I said, I wasn't that bothered anyway. But um, encouraging signs. And we'll have to take the positives. But uh, as always, guys, a big thank you for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like. That's much appreciated and it really helps my channel out and I'll see you for the next episode of career mode tomorrow afternoon.